Kinetic typography is the use of moving text to convey ideas in a creative and engaging way. I'm going to show you how to create this example of kinetic typography in After Effects. I've animated each letter in a different way, so you should come away from this video with a variety of new ideas and techniques. Let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to create a new composition. So we'll press this button here and we'll call it kinetic typography. And we'll leave it at 1920 by 1080. We'll leave the frame rate at 30. And for the background color, just change it to a dark gray like this. And press OK. Now let's add our text by pressing Control T or clicking the type tool here. And I'm going to type in kinetic typography. And we're going to come to the align panel and center it and press S and scale it up. Now we want to animate each character separately. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to convert each character to its own shape layer. One way you can do this is by right clicking your text layer, pressing create and then create shapes from text. So if you click that, it kind of does what we want, but you can see here a lot of the shapes have overlapping elements, which is going to cause problems for us later on. So we are actually going to do this instead in Illustrator and we're then going to import our text to After Effects. So here I am in Illustrator. I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to type kinetic typography again. Click the selection tool and increase the size of this text. I'm gonna to come to the align panel and we'll align it here. I'm gonna choose a font in the character window. I'm going to choose band shrift bold condensed and let's align it again, scale it up a bit more. Now select your text, come to type and create outlines. And now you can see similar to what we had in After Effects and you can see all these overlapping elements. But to fix this problem, you can click each letter, come to the Pathfinder tool and press Unite. So I'm just gonna go through and do that for each letter. Now let's save this Illustrator file. I'll name it text.ai and this window will pop up, just press OK. Before we import this into After Effects, you need to come to the Layers panel, twirl down the layers, Select your group, click this burger menu, and press Release to Layers sequence. And that has released all our letters to their own layers. And we're just gonna shift select all of them and drag them to the base here. And you should find you have an empty layer here. You can delete that now. We do this because After Effects will separate each base layer into a separate After Effects layer, but it won't do it if they're all nested within a bunch of groups. So let's save this again and come back to After Effects. And let's import that Illustrator file by holding Control I, locate your file, press Import, make sure layer size is selected here and press OK. And you should find it creates you a composition called text. And in here, you can't see because they're all the wrong color, but you have all your letters here. Now, before we change their color, I want you to right click all these Illustrator layers and press Create create shapes from vector layer. And now we've got shape layers rather than illustrator layers. So I'm going to go through and just delete all of the illustrator layers. And now we can press control A to highlight all these layers and change the fill to white so we can see them. So now we have each of our letters as separate layers in After Effects. As you can see, that's quite a painful process. If you wanna speed this up, you can actually use the Overlord plugin. So for instance, if I highlight all of these letters, and open the Overlord plugin. And then I press push selection to AE. I come back to AE, boom, it's done in one click. So I recommend that plugin. I'll put a link in the description if you want that plugin. Uh, but either way, I've showed you how to do it without plugins if you need it. So let's come back to our text composition and let's just control A to highlight them all, control X to cut, and let's bring them back to the composition that we created earlier. So I'll delete the one that was already there and I'm just pasting my layers in. And now we can delete that text composition that uh, After Effects created when we imported our Illustrator layer. Now I'm going to go through and name the layers the name of the letter. So I'll name this one K, this one I and so on. And to make things even neater, I'm just gonna highlight all the layers for typography and change the color to orange. So we've separated them by label color as well. And that's setup complete and we can get on with the animation now. So for the K, let's select the layer and let's twirl it down 
until we get the path element here. And we're gonna keyframe the path. So let's click this little stopwatch here to add a keyframe for path. And let's drag the keyframe forward a little bit to let's say one second. Okay, now let's go to zero seconds and let's zoom in a bit so we can see what we're doing. Now I'm gonna select all of the points on this path apart from the two on the right. And I'm gonna drag them to the left. Okay, and now the animation should go something like this. Now we're gonna select the layer again, press P and add a position keyframe. You can press U, which will bring up all of your keyframe properties. So now we can see the path and the position at one, at, in one go. And let's bring the position to where the final keyframe is for the path, and then come back to zero seconds here and move it off screen to the left. And now you can see it's coming in and the path is changing. We want the position to finish animating before the path does. So we'll drag these keyframes for the path forward a little bit. And now we have something like this. Now this might not look very good right now, but if we add some easing, it's gonna improve this a lot. So if we highlight all our keyframes, press F9, which will add easy ease. Watch it again. Yeah, it's slightly better. I think the position animation should happen a lot faster. So we're gonna just bring these keyframes back. Now let's click our path property and come to the graph editor. We want the path animation to start fast and end slow. So we'll drag this handle back and this handle this way. And you can see it's starting off fast, ending slow. Let's see how this looks. Okay. Now let's select the position property. I think we want the same for this as well. So let's drag this handle back. This one like that. And then we have, I think we're almost there. I just think we want the path animation to happen a little bit sooner and a little bit faster. I like it. Now let's move on to the eye. We want the bottom part of the eye to scale up from the bottom and we want the dot in the eye to fall from the ceiling and sort of bounce. So let's twirl it down and we have two paths here. The first thing we're gonna do is right click the second path and group it drag it above the other group. And now we have two separate layers that we can work with. And group two seems to have disappeared here. It's just because now it doesn't have a fill property. So we can twirl down group one and copy and paste this fill one to group two. So let's twirl down the transform for the dot or group two and keyframe the position at one second move our playhead to zero seconds and let's just change the position so it's all the way off screen at the top and then it comes down like this but we want it to bounce so i'm going to pull the playhead a little bit further back and then drag it so it hits the eye there and then comes up again right kind of like this right now let's do the bottom part of the eye click group one transform group one. We wanna move this anchor point here to the bottom of the eye. So we can click the pan behind tool here and then we can just move this and hold shift to keep it in a straight line all the way to the bottom here. Now at one second, we can add a scale keyframe and then at zero seconds, we can uncheck this constrained proportions, which will allow us to alter the Y property of the scale independently. And we will take that all the way down to zero. And then we have this. And obviously we want the bottom half to happen a bit more quickly. So we'll change the easing um, by highlighting them, pressing F9, coming into the graph editor for scale and highlight these and maybe just move them to the left here again. So now we have something like that. For the N, maybe let's keep it simple and just have this one appearing from above. So at one second, let's add a position keyframe and then at zero seconds, we can press V to go back to the selection tool and drag it holding shift upwards. And then let's highlight the keyframes, F9, graph editor. Now when something's falling, it generally speeds up over time. So instead let's try moving the graph the other way something like this i 
I like it, but I want it to be a bit faster at the start. I'm just going to move it up a bit more so it's gained more speed before it enters the frame. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's fine. Now for the E. I want this E to almost be written onto the screen. I want it to just appear from this tail and go all the way around like this. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select the pen tool. And I'm going to press F2 to make sure everything's dis dis uh, deselected down on my layers panel. Um, so I have the pen tool selected. I'm going to draw a path around like this. Something like this, the sort of the shape of your E. Try not to um, join the path at the end there, keep it open. And you might have a fill like me, so I'm going to remove that fill by just clicking fill up here and choosing this box with the red line through it. And now all we have is a stroke. To make sure we can see it properly, let's change it to red. We can see it's not big enough, so I'm going to uh, make it a bit bigger. You want this new stroke to cover every part of your letter. So no white should be visible. So we, now we have this layer that we've drawn. I'm going to call it E Matte. And I'm going to drag it down so that it is just above your E. And let's give it a unique color so we remember that it's a, a matte or a mask. So I'm going to select our E Matte that we just drew and I'm going to twirl it down. And I'm going to press this add button here and add a trim paths. Twirl that down and if we change this value we can see it's writing your path. So let's move this um, end property to 0% and we will put keyframe at 0 seconds and then at 1 second let's change the end property to 100% and put a keyframe. Now the magic happens. We select our E layer, choose this track matte pick whip and we drag it to our matte layer that we just created. And now if we play, we can see our letter is becoming visible as the trim paths is animated. There's a slight issue here, which we can fix. Uh, you can see a little bit jutting out here. Um, if we again find the path here that we created, we can just nudge this along to the left like that. And that should solve that problem. Now we can play. Beautiful. Click our matte layer, press U, which will bring up any uh, keyframed layers. Let's add some easing, press F9, come to the graph editor. Let's make a kind of extreme easing where it's the fastest in the middle, something like this. So for the T, I think we should make it flash in. So to do that, we're going to animate the opacity. Press the stopwatch to add a keyframe, uh, change this to 0%, and then let's go to frame 10 and let's bring it up to 100%. Actually, maybe frame 20. Come to frame 20, bring it to 100%. So it's kind of going like this. Let's halve it to going 10 frames and bring it down to zero again. Let's do another 10 frames and bring it up to 100. Now let's halve that again, maybe five frames down to 0% and then another five frames back up to 100%. And then the effect that this should create is something like this. We want to speed this up a bit. The way we can do it is highlight all our keyframes, hold Alt and drag them all and it should scale them down. So now it's a bit faster. If you're feeling impatient and you feel like taking a shortcut, I have made a pack of fully customizable text animations you can pick up on Gumroad for a small price. Just pick a composition from the scenes folder, twirl down the pre-comp and edit the essential properties. It's as easy as that. You can use them to create your own lyric videos or add them wherever you want typography animation. You can even change to whatever font you want to use. There'll be a link in the description if you want to check it out. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so now let's get started on the eye. If you twirl down the eye layer, we've got two paths here, the dot and the main part of it. Select the main part of the eye, the lower part, grab these two handles on the path. So I just shift clicked to select both of them. And then I'm gonna drag and hold shift and bring them all the way up to the top of the dot. So now it's just one continuous line. Then I'm gonna select the dot path and just delete it. And you'll see why I did this in a second. Now let's press F2 to deselect everything. Come to the rectangle tool and let's actually draw a new rectangle and I'm gonna set it to a solid fill. I'm gonna name this layer to be eye matte and I'm gonna drag it to above our eye layer. Then I'm gonna select our eye layer, come to the track matte pick whip and drag it to the eye matte. 
and we're going to press this checkbox here to invert the mat. And we can use this to do a bit of animation because if we move it around, it's gonna block out different parts of the eye. Before we do that, select the main part of the eye, click the pan behind tool and let's drag the anchor point to the bottom. I'm holding shift there to keep it in a straight line. Now let's press S, uncheck constrain proportions. Let's add a keyframe and move this to about one second and then come to zero seconds and add zero on the Y. Add some easing by pressing F9 and then have something like this. Before we do anything else, I want you to hold control and double click pan behind uh, and that's gonna center the anchor point in the middle, which is important. So come to zero seconds and add a position keyframe down here and then at one second, He's gonna come up to the top and then come back down again to close to the bottom and then finally come to where it needs to rest here. And I'll mess with the timing here, possibly drag these keyframes around um, so it's a bit quicker. Let's highlight these keyframes, press F9 and see what that looks like. Okay, I think it needs to start a bit later We'll speed up the eye coming in a bit. And then, okay, that's looking better. So we can make the easing a bit better if we come to the graph editor. So grab these two handles in the middle here and drag the handles out to the left and out to the right. And now let's see what that looks like. I think that looks quite good. Okay, so with this next letter, let's push the boat out a bit. Click and hold your rectangle tool and let's click rounded rectangle. Press F2 to make sure everything's deselected and then let's create a rounded rectangle here that's about the same width as this C, something like this. Now let's twirl down this rectangle, twirl down a rectangle path and we have a roundness property here. Let's put the roundness to the max so it's a uh, perfect circle. And the first thing I want to happen here is for this circle to just scale up. So let's insert a scale keyframe, drag that keyframe to maybe 10 frames, and then at zero frames, it will be zero. So it just scales. Oh, see, this is the problem we have with the, when the anchor point is not centered. So to fix this again, we can control and double click pan behind, and then that's fixed. Now let's twirl down this layer again, come back to the rectangle path property, unconstrain the proportions and now let's keyframe the size here on the Y. Put a keyframe here, just go a few frames forward and scale it up like that. Now you can see it doesn't look quite right because the corners aren't matching up but there's a way we can fix this. We also want to keyframe the roundness. So let's add a roundness keyframe and then move forward and let's play with the roundness value until it matches up. I'd say around there probably. And now we have this. So we've got up and then like that. Let's press U, which should show us all the keyframes for this layer. I'm gonna just make them a bit more separate so that we can see the two processes like that. Now, if we toggle this layer visibility on and off, we can see that we need the center part of the C. So let's create another rounded rectangle. Press F2 to deselect everything and let's just draw one here. Let's just uncheck the visibility of this layer here so we can match this up fully. I'm gonna center the anchor point like normal and then I'm going to just drag it here. Maybe let's scale it up. It needs to be wider. So I'm going to come to the rectangle path and tweak this size property. I'm going to unconstrain and I'm going to change the X. Then we can toggle it on and off and it seems to match up pretty perfectly. Now, if we recheck the visibility here, what we wanna do now is track mat this main rounded rectangle to the inner bit. So if I drag this pick whip to the inner bit we created and then let's invert it. Now we can see it looks like an O because we're basically telling it subtract this inner bit from this outer bit. So let's just name these layers so we don't get confused. This one I'll call C outer and this one I'll call C inner. Okay, 
So this still doesn't look like a C, however. So to change that, we're going to animate the path. To do that properly, we need to right click this rectangle path and convert it to a Bezier path. So now we have a path property here and we can see all the handles. So we wanna add a few more points to this path and I'm gonna uncheck the visibility of my C outer and I'm gonna add these points in these locations. Then we add two more. Let's add a path keyframe and then move our playhead forward. And then we will move these points to the right. Now this looks, this looks a little bit strange. So I'm just gonna drag this point up and drag this point down. And then we should get something nicer. There you go. So let's disable the C underneath and see what we have here. This is what we've got. So I think what we can do is keyframe the position of this C inner layer so that at this point it's not actually visible. So let's keyframe it so it's up here and then it can come down like this. Possibly even later. So I'm just pressing U to bring up all the keyframes and now we can see this other path movement. I'm gonna move that forward, something like that. Now let's add some easing to all of it by highlighting the keyframes and pressing F9. I like it. I'm just gonna change C outer to white. And there we go. Let's drag these two new layers we created to where the letter C layer is. And we can actually delete that C layer now. Now let's move on to the T, something a little bit simpler this time. Add a position keyframe at one second and then at zero seconds, he's gonna be up there. I'm gonna come down like that, but we're also going to keyframe the path. So twirl it down, contents, path, add a keyframe at one second, drag the playhead back. And we just wanna grab these two handles of the path at the top and shift and drag them up. So we've got something like this and let's move the keyframes for the path forward a bit. Okay, now we have this. Let's speed it up a bit. And add some easing. I'm gonna highlight all these keyframes. Press F9, graph editor. Let's have it start off pretty fast. And then the path, the same and see what we got. I like it. For the Y, let's just have it rotate and scale in. So come to one second, press S to bring up scale and then shift and R, which should bring up scale and rotation. Add keyframes at one second. Let's come back to zero seconds. Rotation, let's just turn it a little bit, maybe 18 degrees and scale zero. Now let's add easing by pressing F9 and let's have this kind of easing, something like that, lovely. For the P, I think, let's copy the animation we did for the T. So I'm gonna select it, press U, highlight the opacity keyframes, control C, select our P, drag the playhead to zero, control V. There you go. For the O, we can do something a bit clever here. You remember at this point in time, our C over here looks like an O. So I think maybe we can just duplicate this and have it animate to where this O should be. So let's select our O here, add a position keyframe at one second, and let's drag the playhead to when this one looks like an O, about there, and then let's shift and drag this O over, maybe make this a bit longer. Now let's add easing, and for this one I think, Let's have it start off slow and end slow, but be fast in the middle, something like this. There you go. I've just realized this C is not quite white. And that's why you can see the difference. So I'm just gonna change the color. Um, now something looks a bit wrong here. That's because for this O, we just need to change the start point to a bit later. So it's only visible after the C has already half transformed, right? So something like this. I just want to delay the second part of the C animation. So I'm going to drag these keyframes so that the, the zero can move before the C starts animating like this. I think that's just a bit better. 
For the G, let's do something a bit similar to what we did for the P. Let's add a keyframe, position keyframe at one second. At zero seconds, let's have it come in from the bottom. But again, let's add a path keyframe if we twirl down. Let's add a path keyframe and then drag our playhead back and we want to try and select all of these vertices at the bottom and then drag them down like this. So if we click our G layer, press U, now we can see the position and the path keyframe. Let's only start the path keyframes once the position has finished and we have this. Okay, the timing is not great. So let's add easing F9. And again, let's play with the graph editor like this. Okay, now the second, the path animation timing is not good here. At this point in time, path should be completely off screen. So I'm just dragging it down a bit more. I think it needs to start a little bit earlier. So I'm going to drag it back a bit. Yeah. So for the R, we're going to introduce some 3D animation and we're going to select this checkbox down here for this layer, which will turn it into a 3D layer. I want it to behave like a door hinge, which means I need the anchor point to be on the left instead. So I've twirled down the layer and opened transform and I'm going to change the anchor point so that it's on the left here. And then I'm just going to move the position back to where it was before. And then now if I press R, I should be able to change the R rotation and it swings like a door hinge. So I'm going to come to one seconds and add a Y rotation keyframe, come to zero seconds until it's almost invisible. Highlight the keyframes, F9, something like that. Keep it simple. For the A, I think we should make it fall down from the ceiling and bounce. So I'm going to open position keyframes. I will put a position keyframe at 20 frames and then come to zero frames and drag it up, holding shift to keep it straight. It's going to come down and hit the floor. I'm going to move my playhead so it's about half of the distance between the first two keyframes. So about here. Then he's going to come up and then again the same distance. Now he's going to come up again and I'm going to move about half the distance between the last two keyframes out here and not as high this time and then down again and let's see how that looks it looks a bit weird right now and one of the reasons is because it's added a bunch of bezier handles to these keyframes we can get rid of them by holding down the pen tool convert vertex tool and just click on these keyframes it still doesn't look great but we can make it look better by tweaking the easing. So I'm going to press F9, come to the graph editor, and here you can see our easing curves. First of all, when something's falling, it tends to speed up over time. So we're going to start off slow, and we're going to become fast, like this. Then when it bounces, immediately it's going to be way faster, and then it's going to slow down at the peak. So this is what we want, and you can almost see the bounce here in the graph. Let's watch that. So the first jump is better now. Okay, and then the peak of the, the jump, which is here, is going to be slowest. So we're going to do this. We're going to make the curve look like this. So this is the kind of shape you want your curve to look. Let's watch this. Let's do another 3D animation for the P. So I'm going to make it a 3D layer. I'm going to keep the anchor point in the center because for this one, I just want it to spin around really fast and then come to rest. So let's add a keyframe that we'll put at one second. It's going to start invisible, right? So let's go for minus 83. Okay, so it does this. That's a little bit boring. So instead, we can add maybe a full spin. So I'm going to put one here and let's see what that looks like. Now let's add some easing, F9. Maybe start off a bit slower. Yeah. So for the H, deselect everything and we're going to draw a new path like this. And then we're going to draw a, another one like this. 
So then here we can increase the stroke width. Let's change the stroke color to red so that we can just double check everything. Now we can add a trim paths to this stroke we created by pressing add, trim paths, twirl it down. And now we can keyframe this end property so it does this. So let's add a keyframe at one seconds for 100%. Go to zero seconds, change it to 0%. And we have this. Let's add uh, some easing by pressing F9. Now let's call this H mat. And let's drag it above where our H is. Use the track mat pick whip on that. And then we should see, there we go. I just need to stop this little jutty out bit here by grabbing this path, add a new point to it in the middle and then just drag it to the left. So that looks a bit better now. And it looks a little bit odd at the point that it curves around here. Maybe we can disguise this a little bit by speeding it up in the middle by just changing the easing. Let's, try, let's watch this. Yeah, now it's much less obvious. Finally, for the Y, let's add a position keyframe at one second. Come to zero seconds and let's have it come in from the right. Let's twirl it down and keyframe the path at one second. Move the playhead back a bit and grab these handles on the right in the path. Shift drag them to the right. Uh, let's move these path keyframes so that the path doesn't start animating until after the position's finished. Add some easing and give this a watch. Okay, it's fine, but I want it to come in a bit faster. I think actually what I'll do is add easing to this position so that it comes in like this. And then just make the path animation happen a bit sooner. So we have something like this. There we go. I think it's looking good. One thing we can do is add some motion blur. In fact, I'll just add it to all of them by highlighting them and clicking this motion blur checkbox. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make this second word come in a little bit later. So let's highlight the TY and the P and move them along like this. So the O's finished coming in, then the TY and the P. And then for the rest of the letters in the second word, just shift clicking them all. And also gonna drag these along. And let's see here. I think that adds some extra length to the animation and it allows your eye to focus on the first word and then the second word. So I think it improves it a lot. Let me know in the comments section how you got on with this tutorial. And congrats if you made it to the end. Give yourself a pat on the back. Check out my video on how to make lyric videos if you want to learn more about kinetic typography. And if you want more content like this, remember to like the video and subscribe.